Good morning. My name is Sangeeta Biyal, working as an assistant professor at Vivekananda College of Engineering and Technology, Puttu. Today we will be studying about the experiment that is pulse width modulation as well as the demodulation of pulse width and pulse position modulation. So there are two types of pulse time modulation that is called as one is pulse width modulation as well as pulse position modulation. So if we come for pulse width modulation, so it is nothing but you have to vary the samples of the message signal that are used to vary the duration of the individual pulses. So the pulse width may be varied by varying the time occurrence of your leading edge as well as the trailing edge. So if, I, if you see the diagram of pulse width modulation, so it is nothing but you will have the width varying according to the message signal. So the width of the pulses will be different. So here if you consider the typical PWM circuit where each of your trailing edge of each pulse is varied in accordance with the message signal. So here low voltage pulses which you take uh, will be narrow whereas high amplitude pulses will get wider. So if you, that is if you have low voltage pulses will be narrow so this part will be narrow whereas if you have high amplitude the pulses will get more wider. So that you can see in the figure. So when the amplitude or the amplitude of the message signal is increasing the width will be more whereas when the amplitude of your message signal is decreasing so the width of the or width which you consider here will be more wider. So this is nothing but your PWM signal. So in this experiment what you are going to do is so there are two signals given to an operational amplifier one is the message signal that is your sinusoidal signal. So first initially keep this message signal for one old peak to peak as well as you have the sawtooth voltage second signal so that you that also you have to take it as one old peak to peak with so this is nothing but square signal. So this two signals which you apply to the input of the amplifier that is your in non-inverting amplifier the output which you get is a PWM output. So this PWM output which is nothing but act as a or if you take two signals this will act as a differentiator and these two signals will be combined and given to the third pin which will take the output as your pulse width modulation. So this you can see now in the CRO can observe the output how you are getting a pulse width modulation. So this pulse width modulation it is also called as a pulse duration modulation or it is also called as pulse time modulation. So this when you do in the CRO so initial thing what you have to do is so there are two signals so one is a message signal other one is a square signal. So initially I will show you how to set the message signal. So channel 1 I have given the input. So message signal should be in the range of 500, uh, 500 Hz whereas the sawtooth voltage it should be given around 2 kHz. So initially set the message signal to 1 volt amplitude that is 1 volt peak to peak by setting in the signal generator. So next thing you have to do is you have to set the sawtooth voltage. So in order to give a sawtooth voltage, so again you have to set the signal. So give this T connector to your square that is sawtooth which is a triangular wave. So connect this to the and moreover when you do this experiment please consider this uh, other than the new function generator, the old function generator. So now there is a triangular button which you can see here. There are three signals. One is a sinusoidal signal, triangular signal as well as the square signal. So this is called as a sawtooth voltage. So press this button. It will consider the sawtooth voltage. There is a knob near your square that is a 50% duty cycle. So you have to press this knob. Then there is a button or the knob called as symmetry. So tilt this symmetry to your right side or you can consider it as and uh, clockwise. Then keep the amplitude to 1 volt. So this is your 1 volt amplitude. So this is now set. 
set after you set this and this also frequency you keep it to 2 kilohertz so now again see this amplitude with respect to your message signal because pulse width modulation is you are varying the widths of the pulses with respect to your modulating signal so after you see this you can observe it with a message signal again connect the T connector to your message signal so now measure the output across the sixth pin of your op-amp so that is given to channel 2 this is your message signal this is your output signal so we can check the output now across the pin number 6 So vary the free, uh, amplitude of carrier signal. So if you vary, you can now observe the clear waveform of your pulse width modulation. So you can see here, the width of the pulses is varying for each and every change in the message signal. So initially this amplitude is more, so the pulse width is more. Again decreasing, pulse width is decreasing. You can see in the negative part of your message signal, here the pulse width is minimum whereas the down part the pulse width is more. So all the widths of your pulse width modulation is varying. The pulses width are there. So this is nothing but your pulse width modulation. You can see the proper output. So after you get the output, measure what is the amplitude then take down the readings. So next part it is that you have to see what is a pulse position modulation. So in order to see what is the pulse position modulation, so as we have said pulse width modulation is nothing but you are varying the widths of your pulses according to the message signal. Whereas pulse position is you are varying the position of the pulses according to the message signal. So here one thing you can observe is give the input as initially give the input for the signal. Initially give the input as, instead of giving PWM, give a square wave of 12 volt amplitude. So when you give a square wave 12 volt amplitude, you should get the pulse position only for the negative edge. That is, if I take this as a square signal, whenever there is a negative edge starting, there should be a pulse. So what is the difference between your pulse width and pulse position is in case of a pulse position modulation the width which you take in the pulse position is constant as well as you can see the amplitude so the amplitude is also constant only the position will vary and how this position varies is whenever there is a negative edge of your pulse width for that negative edge starting you will have a pulse again for again next negative edge you have a pulse negative edge you have a pulse so how do you observe this is whenever you compare the output of a PWM or a square signal for every negative going edge you should have a position so this is how you get the pulse position output now we can check this in the CRO and you can see the circuit so this is the circuit which you use this is the IC triple five timer this is the circuit same as which you use for a mono stable multi vibrator so give the input to this second pin of your that is 0.1 microfarad wherever there is a capacitor this is the modulated signal of PWM so initially for this point we will give a square wave of 12 volt amplitude and check the output across the pin number 3 so initially now I have to give a input of 12 volt peak to peak so in order to give that I will just take this connection of input and I'll give directly to this 
now I'll check whether I'm getting a square wave of sorry a position pulse position for 12 volt peak to peak so now I'll change this to square wave so amplitude I have to give is 12 volt so I'll keep it in 2 so I need to fix it for 6 boxes this 1, 2, 3, 5 still increase so now it is 6 6 into 2 is now we have set to 12 so now check the output across pin number 3 so I will give it to pin number 3 will give the input as a pulse width modulation now. So just connect the pin number 6 to the capacitor. So now 6 has been given to capacitor. So now we have to check whether we are getting the output for giving an pulse width modulation. Sorry, pulse, uh, pulse width modulation is the input. So initially we will find whether we are getting a pulse width modulation output. Give the signal, we have to check the amplitude. So first the amplitude should be kept to 1 volt peak to peak. So we'll keep it to 1 volt. Okay. Now pulse width has to be set. Change the frequency, again vary the amplitude as well as the frequency, it has to be kept around 2 kilohertz. So one thing you have to remember is when you do the experiment for exact frequency you will not get the output. So change the frequency a little bit. And this is the pulse width modulation now. So now I have to check whether for this output I am getting the pulse position modulation. So this has to be given to pin number 3. given the input as sinusoidal I may not be able to observe the correct output. So in order to see the difference so what I do is I will just see compare the output with the PWM output. So what you do is for the channel 2 take another probe give it to channel 1 and give this output to PWM that is pin number 6 then this to ground so now you can see it is a PWM output which I am getting. So this vary the frequency a bit. Okay. So you can see. 
can see this is the so we can see this is the width which is varying and you can see there is a lot of difference in the width different width but for every negative going edge you can see the position so this is nothing but your pulse position modulation for every negative going edge you will have the pulses as well as the amplitude is constant as well as the width is constant so in case of demodulation of a pwm what you have to do is it is the same simple connection as the previous demodulations just connect the diode that is 07A79 to a resistor in combination with a DCB. So in order to calculate the value, so you are taking or assuming the T on as 0.01 millisecond. T is equal to 1.1 RC. Choose the capacitor value as 0.01 microfarad. So resistance value you will get it as 1 kilo. So this is a design part of PWM. Just give the modulation output to this diode positive going edge of a diode then observe the output across the capacitor so normal sinusoidal message signal which you have taken the same output you will get across the message signal so one more thing when you see the output actually the, we measure across the capacitor so you can observe that the output which you get across the capacitor will be normally always a noise one so you will get the output something like this across the capacitor so it will not be normally sinusoidal. So one thing in order to make it proper is you have a carrier signal or what you call as a sawtooth voltage which you give as a second input. So this frequency you have kept it to 2 kilohertz. When you get such kind of waveform, the only thing is increase to some 10 kilohertz or below 10 kilohertz around 6, 7, 8 or 10. So when you do this then signal which was having a distortion will be somewhat like this like a message signal. So this is one of the way of getting a proper demodulated signal. Make this connection, uh, make this change in the carrier frequency, then observe the output. If you still have confusion, change the frequency of a message signal. So if this is a message signal, when you change the frequency of a message signal, even the frequency as of this demodulated output should change. So that means your output which you are getting is a proper output. So this is nothing but your the experiment of pulse width modulation as well as demodulation as well as your pulse position modulation. Thank you.